Ricky Jays, Merchant, and Carl Pilton have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is okay. one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. Emily from New York has asked uh, Carl this. Carl, if you were on a, a, a sinking ship or you were in a, a burning building and you were with uh, myself and Ricky, but you could only save one of us, I don't know why that's the case, but you could only save one of us, yeah. who would you save? Would it is be it, Ricky or would it be me? I think it's a two-man dinghy. Right, OK. Possibly. And we're, we're trapped, and he knows that if he stays there to get both our legs out from under this thing... <laughs> the girder. Yeah, he dies, ones. so, he's got, so he's, he's got room, he's got time to save one. It's obviously me. Um, well, it's hard to say, isn't it, at this point? What, because Steve's situation. in the room, you mean? Well, <laughs> no, just, just because we, we don't know what, what the situation is. OK, well, let's say we're on a, we're on a sinking ship, all right? So you're going to have to rescue one of us, drag us into the dinghy. It's, it's going under. You know, you know in 30 seconds... OK, this ship's going to go under and drag you down and you're going to die, right? Uh, and our legs are trapped and you've got enough time to untangle one set of legs. <laughs> Whose legs do you untangle? Now, just because my legs are long does not necessarily mean it's more complicated. No, it's exactly the same amount of time. Just have to make a choice. Terrible. A terrible choice that Steve would would not, um, you know, hate you for. Well, no, listen, this is... He won't be around for long. He's going to drown in 30 seconds. Well, we'll get him. <laughs> so, bear in mind this, Carl. You are going to be stuck in a dinghy with Ricky Gervais, and who knows how long that's going to take. Yeah. Think of all the head squeezing that's going to be going on, the comments, the wind -up. And do you honestly think that he's going to... If there's any provisions, that he's going to split them evenly with you? <laughs> I mean, he's going to have drunk all the water, and there's only going to be about half an hour in. The food's going to be gone. Look at his gut. Look how much, you know, of the, oh. of the food he's going to have to eat, the baked beans that you've got on board. Come or it's on. me. You know how generous I am. I'm always sort of oh, helping you Oh, there we out. go, Carl. He's, I think he's uh, put the nail in his own coffin there. You know how generous I am, Carl. Let's talk about that, Carl. Come on, think about that one. Yeah, I mean, have, have you forgot about that, Steve? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The time, the time when... We went for a coffee, and we had to have a bit of a heated debate about the 50 pence change. <laughs> yeah, you owed me 50p, oh, and you it. decided you didn't want to give it to me because it was only 50p. And my point was, it's not a question of the 50p, it's the fact that it's not your decision to decide not to give it to me. If I wanted to be generous, that's my decision. But you can't go, oh, it's only 50p, well, it's just, Steve. It's my decision. It but you just, you just given him a free keg of beer. Yeah. Uh, no, no, but yes, but that was that did not come to you, and you didn't pay for the free keg of beer. It, it was a promotional thing that was sent it to you. Matter. It's the same thing as the way I gave Suzanne my leaving present from my last job. A lot of people may not be aware of this if they haven't heard us talking about it before. Yes, but you had a gift from your work as you were leaving after <laughs> however many years of service, yeah. which you then gave straight to your girlfriend without telling her that it had been received from uh, people at work. Doesn't matter. She wanted a camera. It's the same thing as you. You wanted that lager that I got for free. It hasn't yeah. cost you anything. It doesn't matter where I got it from. So you now decide, because you've given me a free lager, that you can now say, oh, actually, I'm not, uh, you know, in the future, I'll just take your money, Steve, on a whim. Well, uh, listen, I'm stop arguing us. You're rocking the dinghy. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> have some of my cheese. <laughs> imagine if he would... Do you imagine he would ever say that? Do you imagine him ever, ever offering you any of his cheese? Are you going to save Carl, mate? I, I don't want to say. Well, think about it and... I might do a sort of a... A for and against or something, and then sort of so the conclusion is okay. All right. Well, I've been waiting for this for a week. Um, it's a regular feature now. When uh, we read from Carl's diary, Carl decided to keep a diary. He's gone through with it. I could see it there. It's massive. It's a huge desk diary that he has to carry around uh, with him. And uh, he, uh, is, the pages are getting full up. You're, you're really keeping to this. Yeah. Right, this is uh, extracts from Carl's diary. Did podcast and went for an Italian with Ricky and Steve. Italian place is good. We've been there a few times. I always have the same thing, spaghetti. Can't remember what everyone else had. Last time we went there, Steve had little octopuses with pasta. You could see that they were octopuses. They hadn't been cut up or anything. My rule is that I only eat stuff that looks nice when it's alive. <laughs> <laughs> a cow, a chicken, some fish. 
An octopus is an odd-looking thing alive, even worse when it's dead and limp. It looks like it just shouldn't have been sat in the spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> Ricky drew another picture of my head. We've given a few of them away as prizes, but he draws so many of them that they won't be worth as much anymore. <laughs> Everyone will eventually have one. Like those pictures of a boy crying that caused houses to burn down in the 1980s. What does that mean? What are you talking about? It's just some kid. Uh, my auntie Nora had one, and it was just like a kid with like a blue jumper on, and he's, it's like a painting, not a photo. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And he's just crying. Like a chocolate box, it's really awful sort of sugary. And what happened is it, they found out that a load of houses were being set on fire or burst into flames, whatever. And the weird thing was... Oh, it's bollocks. Every house that burnt down had that photo. Yeah, because every house had that picture in the fucking <laughs> 70s and 80s. <laughs> Idiot. It's like, we're linking it to sinks. Every house that's ever burnt down had a sink. <laughs> You're talking shit again. Carry on. Wednesday. Saw a homeless bloke. I'm surprised that no companies have thought about sponsoring the homeless. Something like a clothing company. Give them some clothes that have an advert on the back. Everyone's a winner. Good idea. Not bad, is it? Got on the tube to Camden. Read in a free newspaper that hedgehogs could be gone by 2025. I think I've seen more dead hedgehogs than alive ones anyway, so I don't think I'll miss them. <laughs> Went round to Ricky's house and had a game of pool. It should have been nice and relaxing, but Jane gave me some cake, and Ricky said, I can't play pool if my hands are all sticky from there, cake. It was the sugar. It was, and it wasn't that either. After he'd finished it, they weren't just sticky, he was licking his fingers, sucking his fingers off, and then was going to pick up pool cues and touch things, and I was thinking, go and wash your hands after licking your hands. You're not a cat. This turned into an argument when I said I didn't want to wash my hands. Why didn't he? Disgusting. He goes for a piss all the time without washing his hands and then squeezes my head. I know I'd prefer to have lemon cake crumbs on my head than knob juice. Was going to do a crossword, but I'm tired and have learnt enough today. What have you learned? Well, the stuff about hedgehogs and that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Was on my way to my mates and I got on a train. Got close to a station, but realised I needed a wee. Was about to go in a cubicle when a blind man with a dog who was bumbling his way through the walkway came around. I said, are you after the toilet? He said, yeah. I said, it's on your right. I shouldn't have let him go first as he took ages and it would be my stop soon. The dog waited outside the cubicle. I was going to stroke it, but then I remembered someone telling me that you shouldn't. Don't know why, why not? That is. Because something to do with uh, the owner should be the only one who who sort of deals with that dog, and you shouldn't. F sort well, you of... shouldn't stroke it because you'll cover it in fucking lemon cake. No, but, but <laughs> just because you know, if you if you stroke it and that, it it might like like me and want to go off with me, and he'll come out and be lost and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> A few people have sent this in, including Paul, the party animal Parker. For some reason, we've just assumed he's in school. I don't think there's any actual proof of that. But do I, you reckon, think... I reckon he left in June, and he's doing sort of bits and pieces, but he's still not a party animal. Do you think... I mean, do you think he can hold down a job? Is he just partying so hard that... He can hold down a job. Um, he often arrives late. Sure. And the, and the boss, who's in an overall, go, Parker, you're late again. He goes, yeah, talk to the hand. Yeah. I think that he's the sort of guy that he, you know, he'll just happily say, "Listen, I can I survive on four hours sleep." Yeah. Sometimes I go to work, I've not slept at all. But I think he comes in with his uh, uh, headphones blaring, right, on a on a skateboard, mm. and the bloke goes up to him, the old bloke, right, the old fuddy duddy bloke, goes, "You, you stupid idiot! You can't work there." He goes, "He goes, chill out, man." And in two minutes, he's got him dancing. <laughs> oh, I know what he's like. Yeah, he is just like he just can't resist it because he's yeah. just he's, he's just a fun guy. Yeah. Anyway, Paul and a few other people have sent in this piece of information they've discovered um, from one of the more respected news networks. Um, the headline is this, female kidney turns lumberjack onto housework. Right. Now, a Croatian lumberjack apparently has claimed that he started enjoying housework and knitting after he was given a female kidney. He claims he's going to sue his local health authority because he says he's become a laughing stock. Um, he used to enjoy heavy drinking sessions and things. Uh, the kidney transplant saved his life, but they never warned me about the side effects. I've developed a strange passion for female jobs, like ironing, sewing, washing dishes, sorting clothes in wardrobes, and even knitting. Well, if he likes it, what's the problem? It's nonsense. It's nonsense. Hold on, though. What makes me laugh is he's become a laughing stock. So what do you do when you become a laughing stock? Tell the newspapers. <laughs> well, yeah. 
Tell the newspapers about it, because then that would keep it completely under wraps. Then. But it's the sort of medical nonsense that Carl would normally come out with. Absolutely. That, the, the, you know, you take on the personality of the person who gave you their blood. <laughs> exactly. It's like those old sto horror stories, you know, you get given a murderer's hand. Yeah. And you go around killing. But, but there can be certain medical things that would change the way you think and would change you as a person. Say, like, how they can do um, face transplants now. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I don't quite understand how this face transplants work because do you get a choice of who, who you have? If, if you have something done to your face and you go, you know, it's burnt or whatever or something happens to you and you need well, a people, face transplant. Well, if you, changed, if you totally changed your appearance, then you would eventually change because of how people reacted to you. Yeah, but I, So I mean, if you gave yourself the head of an elephant, soon you wouldn't, you wouldn't be yourself. Because I wouldn't of the, have it. I wouldn't have that. That's what I'm saying. If they had a catalogue yeah. and they said, here's some faces you can have, pick which one you want. Yeah. Would you be looked upon badly if you go, do you know what? I don't really like the look of any of them. Can I just wait for a better face? Or at this moment in time, have you just got to take what's on offer? Carl, there's no one looking through catalogues at faces they might be able to have. In no, the they face do now because of the face transplant thing. But who are these people putting their face up for? Uh, they wait till someone. Yeah, I know, but at some point. Well, I tell you what, I would not have a face transplant if I haven't seen the face before I'm going to have it. You. <laughs> I want to see what I'm having. Because I could end up with anything. You mentioned elephant's head. What, do you know what I mean? Whose head are they going to use? Is it the latest thing that's died? Oh, well, this got run over before. Yeah, I'll stick this on your head. But where did this <laughs> come from? Where are his mind? Where are these faces queuing up to be popped on a skull? Where do you think they have got time to, to put well, all these... Maybe this is why it won't catch on. I don't know. <laughs> this is extraordinary. You've created in your own head the existence of this pamphlet, and now you're defending it, even though we don't know it even exists. And you're this skull on a on a hospital bed going, I'm not having that, I don't like the look of him, he looks a bit shifty, oh, I don't like that, oh, no. Can I ask this now? Let's say you, we were both, we'd passed away, sadly, in something terribly tragic. Uh, the nation's it mourned, you know, it's, it's terrible, it's like one of the great national disasters. But you... At the same time, you survived the accident, OK, but your face is hideously disfigured. You can take either Ricky's face or mine to have. I'm surprised you're asking this, though, Steve. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just... It doesn't seem like any of them is, like, a great option. Oh, thanks. And this is what I'm saying about the catalogue. If, th if those two were on offer, I might go, do you know what? Pop in again tomorrow. Bring in another booklet. <laughs> This is from Anne-Marie. She says that she loves the podcast. She listens with her seven-months-old baby. Um, that cannot be a good idea. And she says this to you, Carl. If you had children, what is the most important lesson you'd want to teach them? Uh, I mean, in a way, if you sort of look after a kid too much, it doesn't learn that much. But if you let it learn by its mistakes... It'll probably grow up all right. But there are it's some like... mistakes you can't afford it to make to learn from. Yeah, driving a car ro the wrong way down a motorway. Um, test testing if the fire really is hot. No, but say like the time... Does, does broken glass really taste horrible? These are lessons you don't want it to learn from mistakes. Yeah, you can tell them that. But, yeah, but, what that I mean mean? Is, but what I mean is there's, there's certain things that... I, I just think that there was a kid who grew up in our, in our avenue, right, on the estate, who... When it was born, right, we kind of thought it's got no chance, this kid, because its man was, was a bit of a rumman. Um, you know, a rumman? Where, where's that? No, just, just like, you know, she liked going out and having a fag and like, having a drink, and she's never at home. It's the one who had the, the horse in the house. Sure. Right? Which I don't want to go over. <laughs> sure. It's old news. It's yeah. out there, isn't it, if you want to find out about the horse in the house. <laughs> but uh, she had a kid, and everyone was pretty surprised when they saw it, because it was a good-looking kid. Yeah. Which was a surprise, because, like, you know, the man wasn't that good-looking, the dad was a bit rough. But mm. it, it came out, and she was showing it around, around the avenue, going, look at this, I've had. And <laughs> she, was, she was chuffed with it, because it's probably, like, one of the newest things she's ever had, because everything else was always sort of... Second hand. Second hand and what have yeah. you, but suddenly she's got this brand-new little baby, right? Anyway, as it grew up, right, those looks went... Right. And I'm not talking getting old, I'm talking by the age of about three. <laughs> it, looked, it looked rough already, right? And all that, that just happened because that's, that's the life it was in, right? Yeah. So, like, it, it used to, it had, like, a patchy head. Um, it's hair, it's it what? Just, it had a patchy head? A patchy head, it's just sort of 
uh, sort he of wasn't, just it, it, it wasn't a North American Indian. What do you mean, uh, uh, patchy hair? Just, just his hair was patchy. He used to chase sort of cars and stuff. <laughs> it's cars, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but just, what do you mean? He just that's what he did for his. Sorry, uh, did she let it get raised by wolves? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but all I'm saying is that at the end of the day, <clears throat> what is it that makes a person? Do you know what I mean? Now, I don't know what state he's in now, but maybe he learned all his mistakes by the age of four. I'm guessing he's not chasing cars now, but at least he's done it. I'm guessing he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At least he can go, yeah, I've been there, done that, and you don't go back to it, and you can get away with doing dafter things when you're a kid, can't you? I nearly killed a man once, right? <laughs> oh, OK, right. Did no, you? that time when I was in, in Wales <laughs> and I was having a walk with my dad on the cliffs and that, yeah. and I just picked up a big rock, right? chucked it off the edge and as I chucked it off the edge I noticed the fellow was walking down below Jeez. and I missed his head by like inches now I've never chucked a rock off a bridge or like off a cliff or anything and right? it only took one man to almost lose his life for you to learn that lesson yeah but that's how you learn your lessons yeah isn't it? see a lot of people would have said that maybe your dad should have said hey Carl what are you doing no but he didn't know I was doing it I didn't say I'm gonna chuck this off here I just picked it up and chucked it and like as I let go of it I noticed a fellow was down there you live and you learn. That's a little <laughs> mantra. Right? All right. You okay. live and you learn. So the woman who's had the kid, sort of look after it, feed it, <laughs> make sure it's got shoes and that, <laughs> but let it roam about. <laughs> That's great. There's the advice for you, Emery. I love that. Good luck. Just let your seven-month-old baby roam about. <laughs> Carl, a lot of people are absolutely fascinated to find out how you met uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend of how long? Uh, ages. Yeah. Um, and they just, they, they can't comprehend how, well, I suppose that there's any woman out there. Well, there's someone for everyone, isn't there? Yeah. That's always my, my thing. And it's reassuring, I think. You know, we've chatted about the face transplants and that. You know, there's a face for everyone. It's philosophy, isn't it? It's, yeah. I mean, it's really unbelievable. No, there is someone for everyone, no matter what, what yeah. condition you're in or whatever. Yeah. Because um, there's a, I read on the email, someone emailed in an old Chinese proverb. Um, it's something about everything, no matter what it is, has got one talent. And that's the same way in a relationship, isn't it? That everyone, you know, there's always someone out there. And that. I like the Chinese. There's another Chinese proverb that I learned on, on an email. Go on. Um, he who cuts the wood up warms himself twice. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then someone sent in that one about um, too many Chinese cooks spoil the broth. What, well, why is well that's I don't know I don't, I don't know who slipped the word Chinese in there, but <laughs> I heard it was too many cooks. Well, it spoil. was all it was just all sort of Chinese proverbs and that. One of my favourite on the same subject is um, a camel is a horse designed by committee. What do you mean? Well, it, I mean it's having a go at the camel and it shouldn't, but, but it's just you know it's just. It's just a metaphor. And if you wanted to design a horse and you had that vision, but you let, you let 12 people in a room have their say, it wouldn't come out as you wanted it to do, and it wouldn't be as good. A vision is more perfect than committee because everyone having their say, it becomes anodyne, it becomes compromised, whereas the best things you can do is have an idea and have a vision and auteur that. Rick, can I just say now, I can tell from his look that he's thinking, which committee designed the camel? <laughs> Well, I'd just say, I'd say, who, who, why would you request the ump bit? Because <laughs> that's just going to get in the way, isn't it? I, this is, it? I mean, I've always, I've always said that about a lot of animals. It's like we, we've doubled up on a lot of them. We've chatted about elephants and mammoths, one or the other. <laughs> and that's the same with a, with a camel. I'd have that up there as what, what they're doing. They were good years ago in the Jesus times and that. Don't need them now. You know what I mean? We've moved on. Well, not people who use camels to cross deserts. What other, I'm, I'm going to throw some animals at you, and you tell how, how, how you'd have improved them if you'd have been designing them, OK? Mm -hmm. The octopus. So I, I can now go back, I can look at them and go, what are they doing? And wh wh where have they gone wrong? What's up with you? What, what, how could you improve it? Like the camel, you go lose the animal. I'd probably, I'd probably give it a bit more of a body. <laughs> Cut down on the arms. Um... And, and give it some bones, because I don't understand all this. Getting in a jar is, is good. When does it want to get in a jar? It says... Well, it only wants to get in a jar according to your stories. 
No, but there's something that says it can get in a jar because it hasn't got any bones. But it, I don't know why I'd want to do that in the first place. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I can't even begin to answer that. Once again, you've you've said you've claimed that you've read that they like to get in jars. I mean, how do they know that octopus like to get in jars? Oh God, I you can improve on an octopus. Millions and millions of years of evolution making it perfect for its surroundings. Okay, another animal for you then, Carl. Um, uh, giraffe. Um, what what are they adding <laughs> to to the world? What are they doing? Well, it's not about what they add to the world, no, but is I thought, it? But I thought that's what everything's about. It's about things are here for a reason. A lot the, the, of... the reason they're here is because they didn't die. That's it. No, but there seem to be a lot of animals that are like... Do you it's... think there's a lot of cheating? Is that what you're saying? Well, there's I'm a just lot saying of doubling there just seems up. to be a lot of doubling up. Yeah, so and you want... You'd want you you do, you'd get it down to, like, eight animals that represented all of them. So all it, OK, who would get in your, in your team? You can choose no, eight well, this animals. Is, this is what I'm saying. If I was Noah... I would have gone like, hang on a minute. We've, I've just seen something that looks a bit like this. <laughs> Let it drown and have a clear out. But he didn't. He was messing about saving everything. He was instructed by God to save everything, yeah. to be fair to him. Yeah, but if he's been given that job, for me, he's sort of manager of that job. With so, you be, so you believe with Noah management. as well? You, well believe, you believe Noah happened as well and he built a boat big enough to, to cage two of every species? You actually believe that as fact, dear? Well, it's, it's out there in book form. Um, Brilliant. All right. We haven't answered the question that we started with. How did you meet Suzanne? Just that work. Thanks. Oh, chimpanzee, that monkey! You... There was this um, airline, and um, it was having a lot of problems. and, and a what, lot of pilot's the... too tall? Yeah, the cabin was so tiny. Only bananas were allowed in the cockpit for fuel. <laughs> anyway, yeah. there, there was a lot of strikes going on, right? Sure. Because um, I don't know what it was about. It was over money or whatever. Yes. And the well, get get someone that doesn't need money. <laughs> yeah, but but, well, but what else could you pay something in? Well, Rick, I mean, peanuts. Would, but so, okay, peanuts or, or fruit. Yeah. So anyway, the the boss of the airline, the, oh. he had like one pilot who he could trust, right? And that was his son. Right. <laughs> but the problem is with a lot of these planes, mm. you need two pilots. Of course right? you do. And he's like, if only I had two sons. But he didn't. There's no point harping on about it. Right? Sure. Is I, it, is I, a, he runs an airline? He runs an airline, yeah. But how many pilots are there? Because there must be loads. No, there's loads. But the problem is a lot of them are going on strike. Oh. And each week you can see that oh, he's struggling here. We but how can they yeah. just, just close it down? No, no way. You can't do that, no, Rick. Can't, of course you can't. It's costing them a fortune just... if he closes it down. Yeah, yeah but what, one plane's not going to make a difference in an airline, is it? No, no, no. It's oh, all the planes. It's all the planes, mate. So the son, he's mm. flying the planes and that. He's getting worried for his dad because of his business. It's falling sure. apart. He's like, anyway, listen. Well, one plane won't make any difference. Don't worry it? about it. We've found someone who you can work with. He said he's staying over near the sort of quarantine area where oh, all yeah. the animals are kept oh, and yeah, stuff. Right, okay. They won't be looking in there. They won't mm -hmm. bother. No. So he's like, all right. Uh, well, there's no animal you. that could be a co-pilot, that's why. I'll see you. Uh, he'll meet up with you in the cockpit. Like, he'll meet up in the cockpit, yeah, sure. So anyway, he gets in there. He meets them. At first, a little bit of a shock who he's going to be working with. But why? he's thinking, as long as I can keep my dad's business alive... I Not with one plane. Everyone's happy. Then one day, mm. what happens is a little bit of a uh, bit of a problem. Oh uh, dear. Well, what oh. happened is uh, one woman who was on the on the plane got a bit peckish, right? Right. And said uh, said to the air hostess woman, said, oh, I'm a little bit peckish. Have you got any sort of nibbles and that?" She went, uh, "No, I got got a sandwich." She said, "I don't really want a sandwich. You want some, you know, like the usual stuff that planes give out, just like no, a bag of nuts or something." Well, are, yeah. are they not giving those out yet? So no, they don't give it for some reason. She was like, "Look, we've we've stopped giving out the nuts. We can get you That's a sandwich." Strange. And the woman's yeah. like, "I don't want a sandwich. Yeah. I just want some nuts." Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? A sandwich is quite a big meal. I, mean, yeah. I just want yeah. some nibbles. Want some nuts. Well, that's nuts. not available. So Done. I can't, End of story. Can't so she said, "Well, you're saying there aren't any nuts." She yeah. said, "But earlier, I saw you put a tray outside the cockpit." Right? It had a sandwich on it, two Cokes, and two bags of nuts. Right. She said, so you're saying there aren't any, but the pilots get Well, there aren't any now. That was the last two packets. Done. No, no. So Let's go home. <laughs> well, well I'm, I'll go and have a word with the pilot myself, because you only put them out there a few minutes ago. He can't have eaten them yet. I want you, you cannot going go... Over. No, no. I know, this is it. This yeah. is, she was saying, you cannot go over. She's going, no. listen, yeah. I'm going to go over, because no, I feel no, like I'm being lied to. No, you can't. So she goes, so no, and, no and the pilot can well, hear all this anyway. chat about the nuts and what have you, and he's thinking, what's going on out there? Yeah. He opens the door. Yeah. She gets a glance in. Monkey's not there with headphones. Fucking bollocks. 